So I'm going to go, th since I'm the last person, last presenter between ourselves and the reception, I'm going to move through this deck rather quickly. So uh, we have pretty good coverage already of what Pacific Wave is. It's a joint project of Scenic and our friends in uh, Washington State, the Pacific Northwest Gigapop. And we run an open exchange that's supporting both commercial and r and peers. Uh, we've been partially funded through three successive five-year NSF grants supporting growth and connectivity and innovation. Currently, Pacific Wave serves 29 countries across the Pacific in connecting into the Western US. And as one of those links, as Joe mentioned, was a, a new uh, TransPAC link through, uh, uh, through the TransPAC entity from Indiana and Internet2. Uh, terminating in Tokyo and the other end in Seattle. So Pacific Wave is also in, on the, in the Western US. Uh, we have had a long-standing partnership with the Western Regional Network. So that includes the uh, Front Range Gigapop, which serves uh, UCAR and NCAR, University of New Mexico, and their Albuquerque Pop run, as well as further to the West, or maybe really to the East, uh, the University of Hawaii system. And so this is one of the other maps that uh, has been featured in a number of presentations today. So, And so for our hat, uh, like Joe and, and Jim Chen and others on Starlight's NSF uh, IRNC Award, Pacific Wave has, was a recipient of an RNC RXP award from the National Science, the National Science Foundation supporting SDX and expansion. So here the intent that in our scope is that we'll continue our upgrade and evolution of Pacific Wave to support more 100 gig connections, additional 100 gig capacity along the West Coast, and uh, SDN-SDX deployment on, in parallel infrastructure to enable experimentation, such as things like we're doing, interested in doing with Pacific Wave and uh, between Starlight and the global research platform and interdomain SDN-SDX. Um, and even though, Joe, you've predicted the demise of persona nodes and as, as instrumentation. I wasn't predicting the demise. I was saying they could be better. Agreed. I think there's significant room for improvement. So those are among the things that we're, we're actually interested in um, helping provide feedback to the persona development for folks to go on to um, maybe improve their software rollout as among other things. And just as we were describing, uh, collaboration with other IRNC awardees on various aspects of uh, development, measurement, and monitoring. So what we have in our current SDN-SDX infrastructure, we have in Los Angeles a project-funded uh, node um, that provides uh, a platform there. We have a leveraging uh, what had been an existing switch in Seattle to become a SDX node. And this in this current project year, year two, uh, we're adding a node in Sunnyvale. And uh, this also includes, as I mentioned, on the far end of the TransPAC link, we have traditional layer two infrastructure in Tokyo. And um, let's see, in, in each of these cases, where the SDN SDX infrastructure is able, or those nodes are able to land 100 gig connections from participants, or participants that are connected to the traditional layer two infrastructure can extend VLANs or circuits to the SDN SDX environment. And so the, we have control nodes positioned currently in Seattle and Los Angeles. I think Will Black's here, who's uh, leading the SDX SDN environment. I, I was trying to remember whether we had decided whether we needed a node in uh, Sunnyvale. I think we decided um, the two control nodes that we have are sufficient for our current deployment. So for year two, as I mentioned earlier, we're adding a, a node in Sunnyvale and then also interested in doing further explorations and interdomain SDX experimentation and integration. So as one of uh, in Joe's presentation, have kind of the uh, a simplified version of, of the stack uh, going from uh, northbound and southbound. 
And over onto the right of the slide is kind of a, a very high level overview of the, the traditional layer two infrastructure uh, represented in red and uh, parallel links north south uh, touching on the green indicating the SDXXDN uh, infrastructure. And so this is, a, a, again, kind of a simplified version of the control plane uh, implementation for the XDX SDN. So one of the other projects that we're interested in supporting, as Joe mentioned, the Glyph is, has an automated goal, the, uh, the goal being the Glyph Open Light Path Exchanges, which is, I had to look up that. I have to admit, I, had, I expanded an acronym. Sorry, Tom. So as Joe described, this is based on NSI. Um, the, the control path is hierarchical. There are NSI aggregators that um, ESNet runs uh, um, for the West Coast. Starlight runs an aggregator. Netherlight runs an aggregator. And, our, uh, and other aggregators, including in Brazil, uh, are from RMP. Um, so in this case, the, as, in, as indicated, there are around uh, 29 network service agents of which six are aggregators and 23 are the UPA, or ultimate provider agent. Um, this is using a combination of uh, DDS service for NSA discovery and document propagation between aggregators. And as Joe mentioned again, we're introducing uh, new tools, uh, including MACAN for provisioning. So these are among the institutions that are currently participating in the automated goal fabric. And then within, within Pacific Wave, uh, we started uh, last year, kind of in our year one of our project activities, to really try to step up and join the collaborative effort that others had started uh, before us, and uh, Starlight among them, and Netherlight, and so on. Um, so this includes our initial implementation covering Seattle, Sunnyvale, and Los Angeles. Um, in this case, that the UPA that we've chosen is uh, OpenNSA. This is based on uh, development from NorduNet. In our case, the, it, we're using the uh, standard build of the OpenNSA, which on the, in terms of uh, its support for the backend device, it has to look like a single device. So that single device could be an SDN, SDX environment, or in our case, and during this phase of our pilot, it's our traditional layer two switch at, at a given location. So we have uh, control plane peering, as I mentioned, with uh, three of the aggregator locations, ESNet, Netherlight, and Starlight. And we have our initial data plane peers with ESNet, Starlight, and Cynet. And uh, as Aaron and I need to maybe do some work together to bring, make an effective peering between Pacific Wave and Caltech. And um, we are participating in the MACAN um, web UI provisioning pilot. And we're also seeking participation from our own staff, uh, both in some found cycles for DevOps, as well as from engineering and operations. So this is kind of the infrastructure that we have currently available through NSI. We have a selection of 10 gig and 100 gig connected persona nodes. And earlier we talked about having a, a pop or an exchange have a, a DTN. So um, as Tom DeFonte mentioned earlier, the Pacific Research Platform uh, contributed a Fiona to uh, Scenic that unfortunately for a while just sat in our lab. And a catalyst caused us to uh, deploy that at, to Los Angeles in the role of a DTN with some revisions from John Graham in terms of its storage, and that it's now acting in the role of a Globus managed endpoint, both for anonymous read-only access, as well as with proper author federated authentication and authorization um, is available as a, as a write, read-write node for live science data transfer. So this node is also participating in, in John Graham's grid FTP mad dash, and it has had seen use for uh, among the other examples uh, in moving genomic data from Singapore, their national center, su national supercomputing center, uh, in a, with exchange with uh, US-based researchers. 
And we're also interested in using that as a platform for ex exploring other data transfer tool sets and other models of, of data placement. And we're using that experience to form, inform our choices for de deploying DTNs at our other locations. So this is, again, kind of an overview of the control plane for our, our deployment. And so, the, the again, what we're working toward in, in near term is extending that pilot to cover additional pack wave pops, including Tokyo and Chicago. Um, very much interested in incorporating our SDN, SDX environment to uh, work on NSI orchestrated super channels, and as well as incorporate features that we currently don't have uh, available to us in our current environment, including VLAN translation and extend our collaborations with the, the, the Autogoal and Glyph community. Uh, we're also working, I think is, um, I want to say that Har uh, Harvey mentioned in, in another way on the back end piece behind underneath our open NSA, some of our found DevOps cycles is, are working toward uh, developing a network resource manager that can act as an, as an abstraction between the open NSA instance and our uh, scenic and Pacific Wave topology. And so the, the, among the things that we'd like to be able to do is, is also the, among the, the great things that are already incorporated in the NSI protocol, um, but maybe not yet fully implemented in OpenNSA is uh, work with the developers toward uh, implementing in-place circuit modification. And of course, uh, advocate further use of uh, and development of the NACAN provisioning tool and on our side, uh, take advantage of the hooks that are within NACAN to provide a measurement, but work with uh, Marcos and Alex and others at RMP toward uh, setting up the, the bits of the instrumentation that need to live within PackWave to provide the data for those resources. So I just want to go through a couple slides on the NACAN tool itself. So this is a, a, a dashboard at the high level. This also provides a topology view that you can see it in this view as uh, against a backdrop of, of the globe. It also can present a, a graph sort of as uh, Joe is mentioning of the um, Autogold dashboard that's hosted by SurfNet. And this is just going through the dialogue for provisioning a circuit. In this case, I chose to provision a circuit between our uh, Los Angeles 10 gig connected Personar node and a 10 gig connected personar node in, off of Netherlight. And so here, this is what the circuit looks like in the UI as once it's been reserved, provisioned, and active, activated. So at this point, the circuit is live and passing, able to pass layer three traffic. And this is just an alternative view of, of that UI that presents the effectively the the NSI hop by hop uh, path between the endpoints in question. And with that, I'm at the end of my slides. Thanks.